Hey everyone, this is Mr. Airsoft. In today's video, we will be doing a breakdown of my G&G SG550 trigger response build. And uh, mainly just looking at the parts that are in it and on it to make it where it is today. Let's get started. So, starting with the outside, uh, you'll notice that I haven't really done that much to it. I kind of like how the 550 looks on its own. I don't really want to get sight mounts or anything like that. To, like, I know some people will put like uh, mounts, rail mounts on here to put scopes on stuff, but I don't really use my sights at all. I know I would not use a scope or anything like that on here, so I like how this looks. The only thing that I changed is I took off the regular flash hider and put on this big one here uh, to give it an intimidation factor, which I think it definitely does. But besides that, there's not really much that I've done to the outside. It's just really scratched up from a lot of usage. Alright, I got the pins out. The way that I had to do this wiring is kind of weird because um, the way they had this before is... Uh, and if you went to see my disassembly video on this, you'll know, but basically they had these, um, the wiring was, like, separated, so you could take off the upper receiver from the lower receiver a lot easier. So, they had these two, like, even though you call them, like, terminals or something, and they would meet here, and they're not connectors or anything, they just touch, and that's how they pass the electricity through. It's a real, it was a really dumb system, but it made it disassembling it a lot easier, but since I have a gate tight in here, I didn't want to change up the stock wiring from that, so... Um, I had to figure out a way to wire, put that wiring through here. So, now that makes this assembly a little bit weird. I should actually take these off. So, the former wiring actually did go through here, but it wasn't as much wiring as I have in here now. So I had to dremel out a part to make it fit, and you'll see that in a second. When it comes to upgrading guns like this, like especially uh, unique rifles, you kind of have to do some, some of your own like engineering almost to make things work. And that's all I had to do. I had to do a lot of that with this gun. So disassembling this is a little bit more tricky, but now that I'm done working on it, it's not that bad. It's, I don't really have to worry about doing it too much that anymore. One screw that we need to take out here. So yeah, this screw actually goes right into the hop-up, so it keeps it really nice and secure, which is good to have. The only problem with that is that if you're stuck with that hop-up position, you cannot... Like, you can't shim it to the gearbox any more than it already is. But that's okay because this is in a good position. I don't have any air leaks coming from that. Getting that screw is always tricky. So, this screw was just really stuck in there good, so I had to do some pliers to get it out of there. So, back to what I was doing. Um, once you get all the screws out of there, um, you just have to do some finagling here. Basically, get this part out. And what I had to do, because the wires passed right through on the side, so I dremeled this part out a lot so they could fit under there. So that's one of the things I had to change about this. Um, but now these are completely separated. You don't need this. Actually, I will point out that, um, I can't remember if I ever um, mentioned this, but these pop-ups in here are not um, completely proprietary. JG makes this hop up, I can't remember if it's for a different gun, it might actually be for their 550 as well, but they do make this hop up, so I bought two just for when they break. Um, I already broke one of the C clamps right here that's on there for my other one, so I had to buy I had to buy another one to fit on there. So I did that. This is a Prometheus barrel, I think it's um, 500, I think it's around 510 millimeters. So thankfully, I'm not under voluming with this setup, which is nice to have. You don't want under volume all the time. It is useful in some circumstances, but I did not want under volume with this gun. So 
I'm not, so. Get that out of the way. The only problem with having those screws out is that now the outer barrel is completely loose. You just take it out. So we got some of that stuff out of the way. What we need to do now is take off the pistol grip and take out the motor and that will, we will see the next thing that I upgraded in this gun, mainly internally. So when I upgraded this gun, I was kind of stupid and I, this was, it was one of my first times messing around with a Titan. I didn't want to mess up anything and at the time I wasn't that great at soldering. So I did not shorten these wires at all. So they're really bunched up in the gun. Thankfully does not cause any performance issues, but it's something that I wish I would have changed looking back at it. So that's the best way to get this out. So this is let's get this out here. This is an ASG Infinity 22K. So this is um, 22 TPA uh, high torque motor, and that gives me great trigger response with the 13.1 gears that I have in here. Um, so yeah, this motor has worked out really nicely. It's it's in a really really nice mode. I really like it. Let's actually take a look at the pin. No scratch. I, there's no. Uh, uh, it's not wearing down or anything. So this might be one of my favorite, my least favorite parts to taking this gun apart. Just these four Torx screws down here. They're always really tight, and it just takes a really long time. To so I will cut the video and I'll be back once I take this off. Okay, so we just finished one of my least favorite things about disassembling the gun, um, these wires. I really, really, really regret not re-soldering these wires to make them shorter. I should have done that, I may do that sometime in the future. Um, but I actually had to modify this pistol grip a lot for this gun, um, especially for the shimming. I had to dremel the uh, just this whole area here so that it the body would not um, change how the motor um, was in inside here um, because it would have altered the pistol grip. Um, I had to... Let me see. Oh yeah, here we go. So right here, this stuff used to be really thick. So what I had to do was it, it was, it was pressing on these bearings and not allowing them to spin at all. Um, on both sides. So what I had to do was dremel out the sides here so I wasn't pressing the bearings anymore. So I did that. Um, it looks like a hack job in there. Uh, so the next process, the next thing in the process is taking the stock off. And I, I probably would have rear wired this gun if it would had any other stock but this and if it basically if it wasn't such a unique stock I would have rewired it because I like rear wired better it's a lot easier um, for disassembly especially with my case and this gun all right so these selectors are still kind of loose I don't know if I'll ever be able to make them tighter it's really kind of sucks That's the wrong size. Thinking of some time in the future, using the Dremel to go into the side here to so that the scrub screw actually goes into a hole and then it's not just putting pressure on something, it's actually holding it in place. I hate these stupid selectors so much. Probably my least favorite thing about this gun are these selectors. Everything else is really well made about it, except for these selectors. So 
So I also will point out that I am using stock gearbox, the, uh, the stock GNG gearbox. If, if it was a uh, version two, I might have replaced it. I don't know. This isn't really, you know, doing anything super crazy performance wise. Besides the trigger response, obviously, but that's not going to put any stress on the gearbox. So um, I didn't really have a need to change, especially since this is a version three, so it's a lot stronger than a version two. Uh, there is the so, uh, tape, not tape, sticker for the selector for the Titan. I had to reposition that so that it was uh, because this is a unique selector system. It, uh, the Titan only has three ways of configuring the selector, which I really don't like, but um, it's uh, an AUG, a AK, and a G36, and I th I can't remember exactly what I, I think I chose the G36 settings because those were the closest to this one, but you can manually change it uh, where you want it to fire and be safe and pull auto, so what I did was I um, tried to get as close as possible. This sticker is really hard to get right, so um, I don't know if you can see this. Oh, okay, yeah, you can. So there is some Sharpie there, right here, and that marks when the end of my full auto setting is. So full auto doesn't go all the way to the 20 on there as it usually should, which is just something I have to deal with, but that's okay with me. Um, uh, another part that I should have done some resoldering here. Um, I, as you can see, I just have a lot of extra wire for the motor connectors. I really, really wish I would have um, redid them, but I didn't want to mess up the Titan at that time, so I, I didn't do anything. I'll probably f change that sometime in the future. So now we got to get out the little selector switch pieces in here. I'll just all come out there. So. I'm just gonna take this time to point out right here, um, this orange piece is obviously, it's not supposed to be there, but I put it in there. It's kind of my prototype, you could say, of a, of a V3 speed trigger. So it, it shortens, it, as you can tell, it, it shortens the trigger pull by about half, so it's a lot shorter than it used to be. I'd like to get it to go to about there eventually, but that's kind of like a, a, a prototype, so. I'm gonna perfect it with, you know, someday, but um, it definitely shorts the trigger pull by a lot right now. And it's just super glued in there. It's it's rubber. It's a rubber piece, so it won't it'll absorb the shock of the trigger better. That's kind of my theory, in the, anyways. But uh, it, it hasn't come out yet, which is nice. Don't want getting that mixed up with the gears. So going into the gearbox is where I really change things up, and you'll see that in a second. I did keep the stock bearings though because they were fine. I just super glued them in because some of them were extremely loose. And I uh, found this kind of interesting. I was, I, I, you know, I'm sure you guys, some of you guys know who Negative Airsoft is. Um, he did a video recently, and in one of the comments, uh, somebody asked him uh, should, if he should uh, glue the bearings and if that would, if he didn't that would mess up the shimming and I told him no not if you do the shimming correctly and so then he asked what I meant so I explained that to him and basically what I explained is that if you shim your gun correctly you want to have it so that there's as little play as possible so that it's not too tight but not too loose so basically there is fractions of millimeters of play in there so if you do it like that then you don't have the bearings bouncing up and down messing up the shimming so I explained that to him, it made sense to him. Then I told him that I still like to glue a lot of my bearings in place anyways, because um, if you don't, they're gonna spin around, especially with bushings too, they're gonna spin around in the gearbox casing and then they're gonna oval out their holes. So that's what I told him. But then Negative Airsoft came into the comments and he kind of got in a, like an, an argument with me about whether or not it's good to, sh uh, to glue in your bearings and bushings and I don't think he noticed but what I, what I said is uh, I don't know if he noticed this or not but what I said is that it's it's not necessary in all cases but I do it a lot of the time anyways it was just an interesting argument but it, it wasn't even more of an argument it was more of like a debate but 
Um, basically, I told him that he, he has some good points because he, he mentioned how a lot of the times the glue won't hold it in there anyways. But in my case, it has. So once again, it's, it's kind of just a matter of your own experiences. I like to glue a lot of mine in there because it, to me it seems to help, but in most cases it's not really needed. It's just cases like this gearbox where they were so loose that when I when I shot the gear like the gun, I could see the bearings spinning around with the gears, like the entire thing with the inside the casing. So in my case, it has worked. He's a much more experienced tech than I am, so I can I respect his opinions. I just thought it was interesting that we got into an argument about that. I really enjoy his videos as well. You guys should check them out if you haven't already. Alright, this is where the fun begins. And I think, no, not I think. I know that the spring in here is an M120, um, and this is shooting 370 FPS with .20s. So inside the gearbox we have, uh, this is an SHS piston, I've short stroked to go along with the gears I short stroked. Um, this has been pre-Swiss cheese by, uh, I don't know if it was just SHS or if it was e-bike, but it has been pre-Swiss cheese, I bought it off of e-bike. Um, it has AOE correction, you can see the, wa the, the washers are on there. I've had a change of heart with that because I've tr actually tried out these washers multiple times and they've never come off and if you glue the, the screw then you don't have to worry about them coming out ever. Um, this is just a stock piston head, I haven't had any problems with it, it's got good air seal with the, the cylinder, which is also stock. This is a um, Max nozzle because the G&G nozzle is crap, this one has double o-rings, so it's a lot better. It was a big upgrade. This is an ASG um, V3 cylinder head, and it is really, really tight in this uh, cylinder, so it has a really good air seal with that. Um, this is, I think this is, this is actually the stock tablet plate. It, it was, it was in good condition when I did the upgrades, so. What I was going to say here is the interesting thing about this gun is that, um, this, these are ZCI right here. These two are ZCI, uh, bevel and spur gears, while this is a SHS sector gear. And the reason for that is because, uh, when I was shimming, um, the SHS, sector gear, not sector gear, the SHS um, spur gear and bevel gear were both at odd angles in this gearbox, but the ZCI ones were not. So I put these ZCI 13 ones, but this SHS sector gear meshed with the piston teeth better, so I kept that one. So, and don't worry, I, I know that lots of people don't like mixing brands of gears together, but these ones mesh perfectly, and as you've seen in my other video, the shimming is great, so, and the sound is great, so I'm not having any problems with meshing. So, when I, when I did this gun, I spent a lot of time shimming it because I wanted to get it to sound great, so uh, it, was, it was hours and hours of shimming, but it sounds awesome now, so. Um, um, this is, just to mention, this is a Systema M120. I also have an M130 that I was going to put in here, but it's not necessary because it shoots 370, right, right what I wanted, so. One thing that I forgot to mention, guys, is that I had an... Uh, SHS, was it? The layer chips, yes, yeah, selected layer chip on here, and for a long time I was getting really, really low FPS with an M120 screen, which I was really surprised by. I was getting like, uh, it was close to 330 with an M120, FPS with point two O's, um, and I was doing all sorts of crazy air seal things trying to figure out how to fix it, and I ended up reading that like I came across a forum on Airsoft Society. I really like that website for one thing. It's great for um, uh, like tech help and reading up on other forums that with people have problems like that. So uh, that's a great forum. You should check it out. Um, basically, I was reading uh, one of the for, uh, one of the threads in Airsoft Society. Somebody had an FPS problem, and somebody men uh, they mentioned that they changed up their tap plate or something like that. And the dude said if you um, if you're not, your nozzle might be getting pulled back too soon before the piston can return. Uh, so, especially that happens with delayer chips. So, um, uh, just as a demonstration, when you have this in here, gear pulls it back, tap it plate back, and then it pulls the piston back. It's a bad representation, but pulls the piston back, tap it plate goes forward, piston starts moving forward. 
and when it hits the front, that's all the air is out of the cylinder. But um, if you're if you have some like a delayer chip in there, and you don't have good active braking. then the delayer chip, can the detector gear can spin around again before the piston's fully returned and pull the tappet plate back and the nozzle back. Thus, the rest of the air that the piston is pushing just goes and leaks straight out into the hopper and it doesn't push the BB forward anymore. So, I took, I did not need a delayer chip in here for one thing, I don't know why I was thinking I put, I had one in here, I don't know why I was thinking I put it in there. So, I thought, hey, that might be my problem, so, I took out the delayer chip and shot the gun and it was shooting 370 FPS very, very consistently. So that was my problem. It was pulling the tap of blade back too soon for the, uh, before the piston could return and it was leaking air. So I did that and that's fixed. That's a problem that is not very much mentioned. That really that can happen a lot with short stroking too, which I noticed. Um, because if you short stroke these teeth and uh, just, just the front teeth, then this nub uh, technically, that makes it pull back the tabbing plate sooner than the piston would get pulled back. So, therefore, it would get uh, released a lot sooner than the piston would get released. So, um, then that causes the same issue. And I really wish that more people would stress that problem with short stroking with, with the layer chips. That's why from now on when I short stroke, I'm going to short stroke equally on both sides, which I read that someone else on Airsoft Society mentioned that's how they do it, to keep tapping timing uh, good. So that is something that you guys need to be aware of when you're doing this stuff. So, yeah. The shims I have in here are Matrix, um, just 0.2, uh, 0.2 millimeter and um, 0.1 millimeter shims. Um, those are the shims I've been using and they work really well. Um, they've done a good job with a lot of the shimming jobs I've done in guns. Yeah, everything else in here is stock. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. That that does it for this um, overview of my GNG SC550 trigger response build. Uh, 31 gears, ASG 22 TPA motor, uh, gate Titan, and M120 spring, and that shoots 370 FPS, um, 25 rounds per second. I can't remember off the top of my head what the um, milliseconds for the trigger response is, but that doesn't really matter too much. All I know is that it's a great trigger response. Um, but yeah, that should do it for this video. The next video I'm going to do is going to be um, a breakdown of my uh, M6, my JG M16A4 high speed SSG build. So that will be most likely out um, like in a week or two weeks. It's usually when I upload and. One last thing, I'm trying out music in this video, having music in the background, because I know that somebody was, uh, this one guy was suggesting me putting music um, during the video. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to keep doing that, but I just wanted to try it out and see what you guys think. Um, and also, uh, in the future, if it's music that you don't like, too bad because I like it. So I'm going to be doing the music that I want to do. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching this video. I'll see you guys later. Alright, while I was putting this back together, I thought I'd give you guys a quick demo of shooting it. It's not fully put together yet, as you can see. Um, this is a much bigger battery than the one I use in the gun, but it's still... Um, it, the other battery I use provides enough amps, so you shouldn't really notice that much of a difference. Um, uh, so yeah, this is my M16 battery, but this is 11.1 volt, uh, 3000 mAh, uh, 70C to 100VC discharge rate. So. This is fully charged as well. Would try to feather it right now, but this selector switch is still really loose, I'll have to fix that later. It's full auto.